Hey Ross, where my money makes money. Let's just for a second here, let's talk about the four tiers of money. Okay, the four tiers of money, and you're not gonna find this anywhere. This is calling off the TBD top of my brain. The four tiers of money: debt, budgeting, savings, and investing. You know, I preach it, I teach it, I wear it, I share it. Here we go. Debt. As I stated before in a previous video, which you can reference right here, that not all debt is bad debt. Your debt is bad debt, not but what you use it for because you wanted it. Savings and investing. We've talked about it plenty of times before, but are you doing it? Now, budgeting. Now, we have to understand this. We wasn't born into this world with debt. Well, let me take that back. Some of you, when you were a few months old, <laughs> already accumulated that because of your parents and i apologize they did you wrong before you even could start walking they use your name they use your social security number to put out loans and all sorts of things i'm off it but you understand what i'm talking about for most of us i will hope that we wasn't born into debt we accumulated debt somehow maybe we got our first car maybe we um, um got our first credit card and we did the wrong things with it we made ill ill advanced purchases on silly stuff that we had no business buying simply because we wanted something. And a lot of us, we were either low class or middle class or dirt poor. And anytime you have access to capital, you spent it. And we're talking about that whole thing about being a laborer and a consumer. We talked about it as well. But understand that, but understand debt is not always bad. But let's talk about bad debt. Bad debt is when you do what? When you take somebody else's money that you was going to use for whatever purpose, and sometimes those purposes are really stupid, okay, and you splurge, like with a credit card or a personal loan, or you go out and you buy a car and you renege on that actual loan because you knew that your credit at the time was good enough to get that car, and you knew that you didn't have the money to cover it. But you are, and I know some people who are really, who are really savvy and intelligent with this, they don't mind that their credit is going to take a hit for seven years, but they want that car and they're going to keep that car until their credit bounce back. And some of them actually hide their car. They don't care. Okay, so the point I'm making is that debt, if it's not the good debt that I explained it in that video, then chances are it's horrible debt. Now, once again, I call car debt managed debt. Budgeting, budgeting. I can't preach it enough. I almost do it. I want to say monthly I, I do it because sometimes I change my allotments because I want to purchase something. I want to buy something like I'm buying a few things from my home to make it a smart home and some security things. I'm not telling you. I don't want you popping up. But I tweak those things. Oh, let me put this on pause for a month. Let me decrease this for a month. But I'm still doing investments and I'm still doing savings. But sometimes you just got to hold off for a particular purchase. But you're going to keep that going. Now, I like to decrease when it comes to certain accounts in my budget instead of stopping or pausing because at least I'm still doing it. You get what I'm trying to say? I'm, I'm actually still saving. I'm actually still investing. Maybe with Stash, I had eight portfolios and I was allocating maybe $20 in each portfolio, but maybe I decreased it down to $15 or even $10, but nevertheless, I still have my investment going. That only means that my, my lifetime goal of my investment has slowed down, but then I can pick that back up to 25 in a month. It just depends on how you tweak it. Then we're talking about savings. We're talking about that little nest egg. And I know that one of my favorite websites is really fighting. And I can't really say the website within itself because, you know, Investor Junkie and Investopedia, they have writers. So I've been reading some things on there in the past few weeks about how, why emergency fund is bad. Now, I didn't read them, so I can't really talk about them, and I'm pretty sure they have to mention inflation. But I'm never going to say a nest egg or your runaway cash or your emergency cash is a bad thing. I think you need to have hard cash on hand and your flame-resistant, flame-retardant safe. So I don't really think that's bad. And some of that emergency cash, of course, is in the bank and your high-yield savings. I put a video out a while ago referring to saving 15%, 15% of your year's salary a year in your savings. And that had nothing to do with investing. But that is kind of like the golden rule out there. Now, when it comes to investing, I have put out an enormous amount 
a video speaking about investing because for us basic people who just work every day, we come home, we're tired, we're stressed, we might not have the capacity, okay? We might not have the energy. We may not have the intelligence or the smarts. We may not have the time. It could be a numbers of things that we may not have in order to day trade because a lot of day traders, they make a lot of money and they also pay a lot of taxes. But some of us say, well, I do want to plan for my future. I actually want to set things up for my kids. So what do we do with these things? What do we do now? I've talked about all these investment apps like Wellfront and Stash. And I try to put out the 529 college plan. Now, this is all investing because now you're doing what? You are investing in your child's education. You're investing in your child's future. And I would even go above and beyond and say that if you're doing the 529 college plan, you could open up a small investment account for your kids, okay? $5 a day or $2 a day. Nevertheless, when they start off in life, okay, whether they be in college or not, if they're maybe one or two or five years old, they will have substantial wealth by the age of 18. Just think about someone investing for 16 years. Now, whether it's 30 or 40,000, Picture you giving your kids thirty or 40000 and what they'll do with it. Now, some of you are thinking right now, hell no, I'm not doing it because they're going to do something wrong with it. You don't know who your kid is going to turn out to be. You're going, you don't know how your child is going to blossom. Right now, he or she is a knucklehead or she's sassy, he's sassy, they sneaky. Yeah, there are all those things, but guess what? You were too because I know I was. But you, we don't know how they're going to blossom because if my mother was still alive today, if my mom was still alive today, I believe that she would be proud of me, of what I have obtained. And that doesn't mean materialistic. I'm talking about the time and effort that I put into my work on my job, how long I've been at my job, also all the books that I've read, and also the things I'm willing to share with you guys for absolutely free. There is a support link down there, a PayPal support link that you can donate to Ross World. A dollar won't hurt. Message. But the point I'm making here is leave something for them. Have something for them. Because think about all these rich people. Now, I brought him up. I brought this guy name up before, and I know you're tired of hearing his name. But the point is, Donald Trump's father gave him 10 or $12 million to start his own business and run off. Now, let's decrease that amount <laughs> a lot. And you gave your son or daughter. 30, 40, 50,000 that you was actually saving for them in order for them to be prosperous and start their own business or, or their own apartment or house or whatever it may be. Now I want you to go back and think about, and this is not the beat of anyone's parents. It's not. We're talking about us. What did you get? What did you get when you was 18, 19, 20, 21, either in college or right out of high school? What did your parents give you? Oh, my parents gave me a wealth of knowledge. Okay, but we live in a capitalist society. Now, sometimes the information you receive is worth a million bucks, but ain't nothing like receiving a, a million bucks and information that's worth a million bucks because now you got two million bucks. So you get what I'm trying to say. So I believe that you should leave your kids an inheritance. So these four tiers of money actually make a lot of sense when we're talking about debt, budgeting, savings, and investing. Now, when you talk about investing, I didn't did videos on the rule of 72 and dollar cards averaging. It's so broad. It's such a huge topic. You have to go back and watch those videos. I break down shares and stock. I try to give explanation for all this stuff so you can say, well, I don't know how to do this. And I don't know how to do that. A lot of you guys ask all these questions in the comment section, and I am actually happy and I am pleased to answer your questions. But if you just go to my playlist, Ross Financial Playlist, and you scroll down, I know there's a lot of videos, guys, but nevertheless, you will find some videos that's going to spark your interest and get you built up and learn on the information. And once again, this information is free. I'm giving you my time. I'm giving you my patience. I'm giving you all what I have because I want people to make it. I have a heart for people to make it because I know the vision. I know what is truly is a great thing is to give people the information to be successful and not charge them anything. Now, hopefully one day I can charge people for all this great information, but by that time, you'll already know it. 
That's why the support link is down there. That's the second two subconscious message. But understand that everything that I'm doing on this channel is to help you to be profitable. Now I know some too, I know I know sometimes you guys get kind of controversial, and I'm not saying with me, but I'm not above reproach. I make mistakes, but when it comes to this money thing, I want you guys to be supported with the knowledge and information that those rich people have that make them even richer. So I just want to say I can't change your mind. I can't change your mind. The only thing I can do is inform you, um, advise you in a sense, to make the right decisions for you and your family. But I can't change your mind. Some of you are waiting for the right message in order for me to change your mind. Just understand, Ross, where I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to inform you um, because you guys are intelligent enough to understand what's true, fact, and what's false and fake. Now, false and fake, if you think you're going to be rich because you're simply going to work the rest of your life and you're going to buy up everything that you see, you're going to be lost. But if you listen to what I have to say, you will be well off when you hit your 60s and 70s and you don't want to work anymore. Now, the major thing out of the four tiers of money, debt, budgeting, savings and investing, there's one word that illuminates itself inside of all four of them meshing together. Sacrifice. It takes sacrifice to get those things done. That means all the comforts of your life have to change for a small time, for a small period, okay, for a small stint. It has to change in order for you to work on those four. Sacrifice. Debt. Lowering your debt. Erasing debt. Eliminating debt. Not even starting debt. That takes sacrifice. That takes time in order for you not to do it. Budgeting. Budgeting. It takes time. Putting all your expenses. Okay? So most of us have one income, but we have all these expenses. And if you invest, you have now increased your income to match up with your expenses. So understand, sacrifice, savings. After you do your budgeting, now you know how much you have left to save and invest because you took the time to budget. Sacrifice, sacrifice, time. Next, after you do your savings, you're like, okay, I didn't save this amount of money. Now it's time to aggressively invest more because you was already investing that $5 a day, that $150 a month. Sacrifice, okay? So if you don't understand anything else, understand the four tiers of money and understand it takes total sacrifice. Debt, budgeting, savings, and investing. The four tiers of money with a little bit of sacrifice, I have you sitting fat, and happy in your retirement. This is Ross World where I get tired of people give me excuses why they don't want to invest, why they don't want to save, why they don't want to decrease their debt. I'm going to tell you like it is. This fucking invest something. Just a little. I'm out.